What is going on, YouTube? Y'all squad, this is your boy, Yaga This is your review for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, episode 4. So it's later that day. So this is after um, Garcelle opened up to the girls and Dori disrespectfully told her to go take a shower. And passive aggressive was just like, if I have any feels, I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah, that part. Um, I'm not as heated as I was when I talked about this last Sunday, but I was in my bag about that because it's you got your nerve. But anyway, Dori calls PK and tells him about last night and she... Um, interestingly enough, omits. So she's giving him like the the lowdown, but doesn't talk about Garcelle. Mm -hmm. But um, talks about last night. PK says, you know, well, they should have taken her son to go see Mary Poppins. And again, you know, we know PK has a very flip mouth, and he can say some stuff where it's bro, it can get you in trouble in some hot water. But again, sudden ain't that girl, so it is what it is. But uh, when he said that, I'm not even going to lie, I thought about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, was it 2 or was it 1? I believe it was 2 with the whole um, Mary Poppins. I think that was 1, right? I forget. But yeah, it was like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. That that part is, is what I thought about. But anyway, PK shares that he had dinner with Mauricio and, you know, they both share how, you know, they have been having hard times with their respective spouses. And we hear Mauricio say to him, just like, you know, like, I, I don't want to fight. So, you know, Kyle is just right. And PK whole thing is, but why she got to be right again? PK is one of those. It is what it is. I ain't even mad at it. And Mauricio whole thing is because I don't want to fight with her. It's just easy for me to just let her be right. And there's some hurt there. There is some hurt there. But I think and the hurt that I'm sensing is the whole. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure Mauricio has done his share of things, allegedly, because I don't know for a fact. But it could be that he knows that I'm losing control. I'm about to lose, you know, the best thing that happened to me. The one thing that keeps my stock going up in value happens to be my wife. And I'm about to lose that. And now I got to start over. And possibly... I'm going to have to shell out some money and all this other stuff. But it's, yeah, life as you know it is about to change, more than likely. And then Kyle FaceTimes Mauricio. And all I can mention, say is, <laughs> Kyle, you, we can see her screen is on. Mauricio was an avatar. Baby, when I tell y'all, I, I hollered over here. I'm just like, baby, that's funny. So now we get all six of the girls in separate scenes. <clears throat> so we first get Crystal and Erica. <clears throat> They're having lunch. And of course they talk about the night before and sudden Erica's whole thing is just like, it just is what it is. Like I'm not finna give this uh too much attention. Just like I was gonna have a good time regardless. <laughs> okay. I, I don't care what was going on over there. And Crystal as Erica, you know, do you miss your uh, old life? And she says she mean Erica was like parts of it, you know, and, uh, and she, even though she didn't really say it, say it, the glamorous parts, yes, but the other parts, the tumultuous parts, no. And again, we weren't there with her twenty four seven, but I'll just take her word for it. Yeah, the tumultuous parts, yeah, I guess so. We get Sutton and Garcelle. They're on a boat ride, and Garcelle feels, you know, unsettled, you know. But glad that she was able to get off her chest how she was feeling, you know, to the girls. Now, baby, Garcelle is trying to, you know, have her. Because, again, look, we, we share to shoot a scene. But now, they're on a boat ride. Um, uh, I believe, like, the boat rides, the canal rides they have, I believe, in Italy. or for, some Look, some place over in Europe, don't get me the line, okay, because I don't know. But, yeah, they have that in Vegas. And I'm going to say it is, the guy... Was not letting her have let her finish. Pippin said, oh, "Wait, wait, wait." <laughs> Pippin's whole aura was, "I have arrived, and the spotlight is on me." He's like, "Look, there's a camera there. I this is what I'm doing. I'm finna let y'all know I got pipes." And he was just, he was singing, hitting, hitting them notes and everything. I and Garcelle whole thing is just like, "Okay, so he just not finna let me." Okay, this his moment. 
they they even had to clap it up for it. But I holler because Garcia kept trying to talk, and old boy was gonna finish that song. Bless his heart. But he had moments, though. Like real, real talk, he did have moments. Um, and then we have Kyle and Doris. So they talk about you know Doris' lack of sleep because of Kyle, and then she even tried to couple that with um what happened with her and Garcelle. We didn't stay on that too long because had we done that, I would have been pissed. Like, okay, so another excuse of us sitting here disrespecting somebody, especially, you know, this black woman, African-American woman, whatever you want to go by, and then we, <clears throat> or someone that belongs to this person, and then we're going to sit here and use something else as an excuse. Mixing drugs, mixing pills and alcohol. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep and all of a sudden, but I'm glad we didn't stay there. Dori asked Kyle, um, was her stopping drinking and dissing herself a way to protect herself and gain control? And Kyle says, maybe, but, you know, she really needs to be clear right now. And I'm thinking, you know, the writing's on the wall and you need your clarity, especially, I guess, if and when they actually go through the divorce proceedings and whatnot. And her being able to say that, oh, well, he's the one that's drinking. I'm not the one drinking, blah, 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 blah. And then Dorit brings up, you know, their husband's dinner. And Kyle says, you know, last year, in essence, Mauricio was not there for her in the capacity in which she needed him to be there. And then when it comes to him and his business, you know, there's a lot of dinners and parties and whatnot where he has to network and whatnot. And she's expected to be there. And not just that, there's all the alcohol and whatnot. And not only does she not want to be there, she doesn't want to drink. So, you know, there's that. And then Dorit asks if she feels like how she feels about her future, seeing as how her and Mauricio are on diverging paths. And Kyle tears up and says, you know, she just would love to be happy in the mountains, you know, doing what she wants to do. So, yar. Then we get um, Garcelle and Sutton, like they're getting their makeup done. And we do see a scene of the two of them meeting with her son, Oliver, and checking up on him, and again, I did not watch Vanderpump. I have never watched Vanderpump Rules. I might. Like, wait, when we get into, you know, next month, I, if I have some downtime, I might watch. There's a lot of stuff I need to watch, so maybe not. But apparently, he got caught kissing somebody on the show, and I guess the story behind it is he was separated, but no one on the cast knew. So when it was all caught and it got put out there, it was made to be a bigger thing. I'm not calling Garcelle a lie, but I'm just going to say if y'all say so. So now we get dinner. Garcelle has the girls pick a car and, you know, answer a question. Because, again, we got to play a game. We got to sit here and make these things, you know, be about something. Because, again, when they go to these um restaurants, you know, it's free publicity for them. But if there's nothing going on, they have to at least justify being there, you know, the whole nine. So one question is, is monogamy natural for humans? I'm going to say no. That that's that's my answer. No, it's not. It's not. But again, like I said to y'all, monogamy is you know literally geared towards it's it helps the man more than it helps the woman. <clears throat> and then because even when they talk about animals and nature and mammals, yeah, there are a lot of you know groups that are led by the woman, and many of them have more than one partner. It just is what it is, and and depending on what coach you belong to, it's sometimes like that in a lot of a lot of cultures that have not been, you know, colonized and whatnot. But again, believe what you want to believe, go off, do what you want to do. So then the question is, if you find out, and this is Garcelle asking the married women, if you find out that your husband cheated, is that enough? Like, is that one time enough to just call it quits? Kyle just doesn't know, but says in her uh, interview, does she look like the type of woman that would just stick it out? Based off what you say to Mauricio in some future scene where he's like, I'm glad that you the one that got caught cheating. And she was and I think she said some along the lines of, yeah, this time. So, mm, OK. And then Garcelle just like, look, I had somebody cheat on me for five years. I found out about it. And baby, I sent out the email. <laughs> so that lets you know how I felt about it. And then Doreen says she going to Lorena Bobby. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm. First off, I don't need the visual of her Lorena Bobby and PK. And then second of all, Doreen, we know you not, you know, having relation relations with your husband. Stop playing with us now. Stop, stop, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't, don't, don't lie. Stop that. 
So then a question is asked, at what point, I believe Crystal asked this, at what point does money stop making people happier and have you reached it? And this is when uh, Doree says that, you know, she knows a lot of billionaires and she would not want to trade places with them. Understandable. And then Erica has a very telling moment. Now, I do believe that this was a rehearsed yet real moment, meaning that she had this in her back pocket ready to bring up. And it just so happens that this was the time in which she was going to do it. And she pretty much said, just like, you know, it's hard when you go from not having to worry about money, worry about the bills to now you do. Because she went from having it all to losing it all. And now she's having to rebuild and dreads having to open up the bills because just as quickly as the money's coming in, the money's going away. And she's like, I even had to downsize. Da, 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 da. And here's the reality, Erica. If you really wanted to, you could have downsized further. And really been able to stack up some. I, I mean, when I say she could have true, even though last season she was on the budget, but she could have truly like down, down, downsize to where she took care of her basic essentials, paying what she needed to pay and whatever was left over, having that in a rainy day account. So if life starts life and you have that money there, but go off. And the girls even said, I believe it was Garcia like. I like in as I'm glad to hear you say this. I wish you would have said this. And she said, I was fighting from in as I'm fighting for my life. Like I'm having to fight for myself all last season. So like I didn't have the opportunity or the space to do it. But now that things are clear enough, I can actually just be free and just kind of like be with my emotions and my intrusive thoughts. But at the same time, not staying there too long because again, if you are, if you do, and she's right about this, you can go down a rabbit hole and whatnot and then end up putting yourself in a depression that you didn't want to be in. Get it. So now they go to the Hunky Tonk um, event, bull riding. Yay. So the next day, they're leaving. And Erica Fran uh, from the show, Davis, was on the elevator. So I guess the elevator was going down. And they were about to get on the elevator, and he, along with Mikey, who is her um, manager or assistant manager, whatever, I know it's her friend, but I think he plays a role in uh, her um, business. And she pretty much says to Sutton, oh, well, you can go ahead and apologize to my friend. What did she say? Um, she demands that Sutton apologize for saying that he was over the top and that the show was creepy. Now, first, let me say this. I won't keep it a buck with you. I think that was a producing. Why? You're not going to tell me that Erica wasn't communicating with Mikey and be like, oh, wait, wait, y'all, y'all way down or let's time this to where once you're going to elevate it, send me a message and I can hit the button so we can have this moment. I, I don't believe that it just happened. I really don't. But again, I'm cynical. Like I said, I mean, I'm, opt I, I'm optimistic to, you know, a fault, but yeah, my pessimistic side is mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. And she's real adamant about this. And if I was sudden, and, I, and I'm going to just share this, and I mean, this is going to play out in a in the last scene with sudden, is sudden, and, he, and we all can benefit from this, needs to learn how to sometimes you don't owe a response. And sometimes silence is a good enough response. One thing that I have learned to do, and I don't always do it, <laughs> but when I do, I do square breathing. Like when I feel myself about to go off the rails, or when I feel like, okay, you're coming at me with some very chaotic energy, or you are a lightning storm right now, you need a lightning rod, and you're trying to make me that. I will do, I will start square breathing. And that's a good 12 seconds right there where in the process, I'm having to gather myself, have the foresight instead of the hindsight. But at the same exact time, it throws the other person off because it's nothing but dead silence, especially when that person is trying to have a moment because you're not going to get it off of me. But Sutton says it's not what she said. Don't put words in my mouth and says that my only issue was the spray eagle. And then she says, I apologize. My bad. Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. And then Erica says in her interview that, you know, even though she has given up arguing for Lynn, God told her it was OK because you can't tell her that the elevator just opening and both of them happen to be on there. It wasn't a sign from God. OK. 
And now they're on the Sprinter. And Sutton felt embarrassed. She says to Erica, Erica says, we were having a good time. And then I heard you weren't and you made it a big deal. Sutton said it became a big deal when more people came out. Facts. Facts. It did. Because it's like, okay, well, this one person is gone. And, you know, sometimes you're going to go out and check on, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not even going to lie. There have been times that I just felt the surge in my spirit. And I would leave, but I would let somebody know, like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and cut out. I'll talk to y'all about it later. Da, da, da. And then I just go ahead and go to where it's, I'm not causing a big scene. It's just, I'm going to leave right now. And I'll talk to y'all later. Or, oh, I'll be around. I'm going to go to bed. Like, once I feel it coming, making it to where it's not that big of a deal because she sat there and was making the faces and, and all this other stuff. Yeah. Garcelle's intent went up. You left. She went to follow after her best friend. And then it did become a thing. So it went from that to then here comes Kyle and then Kyle blowing it way the hell out of proportion. And then it just being what it is. So her thing is it became a big moment then. And then Kyle calls sudden unhinged. And Kyle knows what she's doing with these buzzwords. And it's so interesting how Kyle did not have this type of energy last year. But now you have this energy now. Okay, Kyle. Uh, again, hey, better late than never. And Sutton gets emotional at everything because it's like, okay, I'm being misunderstood right now. And then the re questions, you know, is... Sutton's emotions, like, are they real right now? And Sutton is pissed because he's like, yes, they are real. And people that do, again, sometimes, yeah, some people are performative. But sometimes when people do that, it's because they know that this is an act that I will be putting on because I want sympathy. So I'm just trying to see. And then Garcelle wishes Dorit would have gone after Sutton. And Dorit wanted Garcelle to tell Sutton that she's overreacting. Now, you're trying to comfort Sutton, but you're saying not to her, but about her, like she can't hear you, that she's overreacting. And what she's also doing is policing uh, Sutton's emotions and disregarding her feelings. Which, again, that's, that's, yeah, don't do that. So Garcelle responds that you don't know what I said because you weren't there. But I did say those things and right and it before when she had said to the read, I wish she would have went after her. My antenna went up for Garcelle when she made this statement. I'm like, oh, OK, so Garcelle obviously still isn't over how Dory dismissed her. So rather than go back and have that same conversation with Dory, it's here's an opportunity for me to sit here and make this issue a moment and funnel all of my energy and all of my emotions into this. That's exactly what, again, Garcelle's defending her friend, but that's, you can't convince me that's not what she was doing. So Sutton apologizes and says that she's done. Dorita's trying to get clarity and Sutton is not having, it's like, I said it's done. Don't make me tell you to zip it. Because it's like, once I said, but here's the thing, Sutton, when you say that you're done, you're done. You can only control yourself. You can't control anybody else. So if Dorit wants to keep talking, let her keep talking. But again, some of this stuff, you don't have to give light. Some of this stuff, you don't have to give energy. Some of this stuff, you can just ignore and let people talk. Because again, you ignore something, someone, or a child long enough, they will stop performing. I'm just saying. So back at Beverly, Erica and Garcelle are having um, lunch Garcelle feels Dorit doesn't, you know, listen, though, you know, she talks too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she still feels a way about um, sharing her feelings with Dorit and Dorit feeling. Hold on, wait. Her feelings with Dorit, but feels, you know, she if she and Eric can sit across from each other. Then you know, so can her and Dorit. But it's also one of the things where Dorit is one of those people where she loves to hear herself talk, right? And I mean, hell, I deal with people where you know, it's someone that like where you'll get to telling a story, right? And if they have something, they they're going to keep trying to make their point until you shut up, so they can make their point because in their mind, their point is more important than your point. And you need to hear them. Like, it's all different variations of stuff such as this. And sometimes for some people, I mean, you just got to let them talk 
until they can actually reveal to you what that it is, like what the thing that is really scratching at the surface is. But again, not here for no psychology. Garcelle brings up Erica versus Sutton, and Garcelle feels that, you know, she may need to, you know, let Sutton fight her own battle, more than likely. Like, it's one thing to defend your friend, but if your friend knows that you always will come in and be Captain Saver, then yeah, she's not going to fight for herself. I believe it was last season when Garcelle was getting her to leave, because Sutton had a whole battery in her back when she saw her friend was leaving. Oop, do do do. Oh, let me go. <laughs> you feel me? So now we get Sutton and Cal. Cal comes over to see her. Cal has tea. Sutton has cocktails. Sutton says Erica intentionally embarrassed her. I agree. And Sutton is being very performative with her reenactment. I ain't mad at it. I would love her to have the same energy when she sees Erica, but again, I ain't mad at it. And she had even said in her confession that she realizes that, especially with that trip, that Kyle will never be a friend to her as she tries to present herself to be. And then Kyle is um, hearing Sutton to respond, not listening to understand, and ask Sutton, is she okay? And she's being very passive aggressive with it. Again, this type of Kyle, where you been for these other seasons? Because these other seasons, you was very, uh, throw the rock, hide your hand, let me play producer. Now you want to be all up in the mix. Okay. Sutton says to Kyle, okay, protect your friend, talking about the read, and told her, you insert yourself without knowing the whole story. And that upsets Kyle because Kyle is just like, you know, I saw a friend in distress. I go over, you say I insert myself by, by the way, F you. But you don't always know the full story. And there have been instances where you've inserted yourself into stuff, doing sudden real grimy, real dirty, because you don't know all of what was said. But you come in, you hear a certain part, and you feel because you're the longest standing housewife on this particular franchise. You're the only you're the only OG left that you can just sit here and throw your weight around and everybody's gonna sit here and you know bow down and kiss the ring. That ain't how it works. So she says, you have a habit of losing your ish in ridiculous circumstances. Now, look, baby, Sutton kind of, it was one of those where Sutton 2.0 popped out because you saw the face like, the level, what, what, what? Then she was like, name them. She was like, yeah, because, and then now again, I'm going to get a Sutton. I was all here for the whole name, em, but Sutton was being real passive aggressive because she kept cutting her, name it. Name them, name them, and then you, <laughs> then Kyle gives us and says, "Let me talk, Jesus, baby." And then when <laughs> when son was like, "Name them," would I tell y'all I holler? <laughs> I'm like, man, that's the type of time that I like. I, I I love it. I love it. I was here for it. And then Kyle says, "I don't know if you're okay." Are you okay? Sutton, name them. <laughs> I loved it. And then she does give three answers. She was like, hurt, like the whole ugly pants thing. Okay, yeah, that was one. The second one was, you know, at Lake Tahoe. I didn't like that example because if I recall correctly, Kyle was not present. So you only saw that via the playback. And then she said, the show. Okay, she's a very emotional person. We've seen Kyle get emotional over stuff where it has like, you emotional over that? I'm still sure on how to, mm, I'm about to go. How Kyle got emotional when you have Lisa Renner going at your sister. Your sister, Kim, the queen. Okay, Kim, queen. When she said to Lisa Renner, Let's talk about the husbands. She didn't have to say a whole lot. Let's talk about the. No, because I, I, no, like I said, she said a lot before. But it was the let's talk about the husbands. And then you have Lisa Renna get up, baptize your sister. Actually, before that, she even said to you right then, Kathy is more of a sister than you ever have been. But going back to that, Lisa Renna gets mad, gets loud, stands up baptizes your sister, breaks the glass, and that was enough for you to run off crying. So you getting emotional when your sister just got assaulted. 
So again, we're not for the same time about some about somebody overreacting in some moments where it's just like, what the hell is going on? But anyway. And then she says, you didn't seem okay then, and you don't seem okay now. And that was the end of the episode. So, yeah, y'all, that's all I got. I, 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 I gave y'all what I had. I'm proud of myself. <clears throat> so, Potomac, like I said, if the cable is cabling, it'll be on. Like I said, y'all have the review tonight. Um, also, um, tomorrow, the Whether You Like on Our panel will be uh, at Really Be TV's house. So, make sure you catch us there. And, yeah, I will see you all for those two things so please rate comment subscribe and share and i will see you all on the next video peace